Hello, this is Hakurabeen, and today we are going to be finally continuing with that uh, one thing, the Bellaverse Saga, as I think I remember it being. Um, I remember having to stop because I ran into a document that was way too long for me to be able to read unless I got, like, an extremely long amount of time of free time. Today's that day! So if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. The dead never die. Over the hill, over again, touch the jewel and live once more. Fight in the darkness, die in the light. Over the hill, over again. Ashton recited the prayer to herself as she clasped her hands together. She drew her sword and laid it out before her, with one and slow motion, cut a straight line across her palms. A prayer to the god of death served one well in the ways, although not everyone had the clarity of mind to realize that. Her master, Lord Hubris, looked down at such shameful displays of faith. He hated most gods, but was particularly resentful of Avert. Ashen wasn't sure why, but she knew better than most not to question Lord Hubris. Still, she would never forget the things her mother taught her, and what Lord Hubris didn't know wouldn't hurt him. The dunes weren't more than two days walk from Portsmouth, and Ashen spent the majority of that time wondering exactly what it was Lord Hubris wanted from this site to. He'd been particularly interested in one of the old wonders. Something square, made of metal, with a face of black and white. She hoped she had enough room in her satchel. Somewhere in the distance, the undead shuffled through the sands. Their old home, the Saitu, lay half buried. Its white walls were a stark contrast to the beige desert that covered this part of the waste. If the undead had any decency, they'd do the waste a favor and go back home. But the new men were exceptionally uncouth. Their behavior was more than enough to drive the most sensible travelers away, and if for some reason one were to think about approaching, the overwhelming amount of them in this part of the waste would deter almost anyone. Almost. Ashton slipped by the horde, trying her best to move with the sand as the breeze carried it toward the side too. The other didn't have the best eyesight, she probably didn't need to take such complicated precautions, but one could never be too careful. She gotta open the door to the side too with the, circu the circular blade she procured earlier. Careful not to make too much noise. The undead were a ways away from her, but sound traveled far on the sandy winds. Once a person-sized hole was cut into the door, Ashton descended into the site too. <clears throat> Ashton had been to places as before, but this one was different. She could almost hear the ghosts of the old world speaking to one another in the walls. Fear is starting to swell in her stomach, and Ashton squint her eyes to get to see a bit better in the darkness. She explored the site too with her senses on high alert, marking doors so she wouldn't get lost. The halls reeked of death. Agent blood spat at her, saying the metal walls dark red, and the ghost spoke in great volumes near those spots. Ash's imagination began to wander as she discovered more bodies. As far as she went, surely some of the old ones had been killed and risen again as new men when the world ended. It seemed him not all of them met that fate. Hopefully, there wasn't anything in down here that was still rubbing the halls. Ashlyn steeled her nerves. Lord Hubris was not one to be disappointed twice. A shadow flickered at the end of the hall, and Ashen drew her sword. She hoped the prayer to avert under her breath. She said the prayer to avert under her breath and touched the ring on her finger with a symbol on it. Then approach. Ashen tightened her grip. Bad idea. Ready to decimate whatever had cast a shadow at the end of the hall. 
or you aren't supposed to really have a super tight grip on the sword as it might actually lead to problems. But that's just something I've heard from like fantasy novels anyway. The society was a home only to monsters and wonders. A lesson Ashen learned when she was a much younger, more naive explorer. She set her elder sword high above her head as she crept around the corner and braced herself. The only thing she saw was a small, familiar creature staring back at her with beady eyes. It was about half her height and far too fluffy to be spelunking on its own. The creature barked and smiled back at her. Ashen wondered how it got this far or down unharmed, and then she spied the hole in the ceiling that led to the surface. She shook her head. Alpine, you foolish beast, you, you scared me back half to death. Alpine barked, her tail wagging furiously. Well, I suppose I could ask for a more loyal companion, could I? Ashton stroked the fur on Alpine's head and looked down the hall as she emerged from. Well, I read that wrong. Anyway, dimly lit as it was, Ashton could still make out the markers on a wall she had left on her left as visit. There were a few unexplored rooms, and that meant there were still more wonders to be had here. Ashlyn was usually far more cautious than this. She would often abandon the site to the second she heard a noise she couldn't recognize or see something even remotely frightening. But Alpine's sudden appearance gave her a renewed sense of confidence. The dog could drill holes through solid steel like it was swimming through water. Between Ashlyn's own skill with the blade and Alpine's ability, most of the creatures in the waste and the site as well stood no chance against them. As we approached the door, she hand marked. The strange device that hung on the wall, on the door's right, it, it had a red light above nine strange symbols. The symbols were from the old times. After I'd seen them before in the ancient texts. She did not know what they were, only that pressing down on them in the right order occasionally opened doors in the side too. It's a key. It's a, um, passcode. One of those, um, locks that are, that you open with by pushing certain numbers in a certain order. I think they're called keypads? I forget. She tried pressing on the symbols in a dozen different combinations, and the light remained red. There's like... I think over a million different combinations that you can get for a... Four-digit... A, it's... A code. She tried the combinations of other doors in sight too, and the light remained red. She tried pressing all the buttons at once, and the light remained red. Alpine barked. Ah, uh, you're a genius, Alpine, Ashton smiled. She pointed at the door. Have at it! I'm starting to feel like Alpine is more... ...or than a dog. The beast beside her barked again and started shaking as he was trying to dry himself. Soon he picked up speed and soon after, her alpine spotty was little more than a blurring mess of rotating fur. The ground trembled as alpine stepped forward. His nose pierced the metal with ease and soon after that the door slid open. The scent of ancient air and assaulted Ashton's nose. She cringed. And then she panicked as a deafening a noise echoed out through the halls. Kier's Forge! The noise did not stop, nor did it show any signs of getting any quieter. A voice was saying something in the old tongue. Oh, they set off an alarm. But Ashley couldn't recognize what it was saying. If she was in the middle of a heart attack, perhaps she could have braked her memory and figured it out. But at that moment, Ashlyn was... Uh, but solely focused on getting as far away from the Saito as she could. You forgot to grab the wonder.
Ashlyn snatched the object from within the room and stuffed it in her satchel. Luckily, whatever lived in the room before she discovered it was is small. Although in her haste, Ashton didn't get to look at what she had grabbed. All she knew was that it was a metal cube. She forgot to avert that it was the wonder Lord Hubert asked her to find. Alpine was arguing of a storm just outside. Soon enough, he would start shaking, and Albert knows how far he would dig before he stopped. As soon as she left the room, Ashton knew and knelt down and stroked Alpine's fur. He was calmer now, smoothed down from a raging bark into a constant growl. We have to move, she yelled, and out into the halls they ran. Ashton followed the path that she had marked on her way in, and soon found herself at the entrance to the site too. She looked down into the west and noticed a rather large cloud of dust approaching from the west. Were dust clouds supposed to move that way? It wasn't like anything she had ever seen before. Were those people? The horde of undead turned their heads east as they heard a noise in the distance. They'd wandered far from the hole in the ground they crawled out, but a thousand years of undead takes its toll on the brain. After a few years of walking in one direction, they all eventually stopped up to wandering and started waiting. They were human ones, as all new men were. The site who was their home and the last place many of them saw before they perished. A few of them came here for salvation before the old world ended. More migrated just after it happened. Over the years, the old ones crowd here in search of something. Hope, maybe? Or redemption? Either way, they all met the same fate. And there they all stood. One great collective that remained of the old world's inhabitants. The horde of of orange and white shuffled aimlessly in place for the last thousand years. Oh, there you were. D-class. Dang. Most everyone with the slightest inkling of common sense avoided them. Most everyone around this part out of the ways kept, kept quiet unto themselves. For they dare not alert the horde. But they all heard that familiar sound coming from the east, and one by one they shuffled east to investigate. Ashton's heart nearly leaped out of her chest as she realized the dust cloud was coming straight for her. She had an easy time sneaking around the new men the first time. They hadn't been paying any particular attention to anything before. But now they were active and far too great in number to evade. Alpine barked and tilted down in sight too, then ran back into the red tent in darkness. Ashlyn swore and ran after him. The stupid beast was her only companion and in the ways, and she would be sent to the afterlife before she let something happen to him. Alpine, she called as she chased the beast through the halls. You're going the wrong way, foolish beast. But Alpine did not re relent in his pursuit. Ashton tried to peer through the darkness but couldn't see anything and clearly aside from Alpine in front of her. The beast barked at nothing. Ashton tried to calm him but nothing was wrong. Then Alpine threw flew through the air into the wall. He let out a whimper as all his breath escaped him at once. Ashton's heart skipped a beat. She lowered her sword so that the tip was level with her chin. She couldn't see whatever Alpine and could, but it didn't mean it wasn't there. Ashton 
Ashen ran past Alpine and swung, letting out a shriek and connecting in with the wall beside her. Sparks erupted from the, from the strike. Vibration shot through the blade and rocked Ashen's fingers. Her arm was trembling, but she didn't pay any mind. Alpine was breathing heavily on the floor. Ashen knows a wound on the beast, and now, and how his blood was is now mixing with the old ancient blood that was already there. She swung again. Again, her blade went to wall. Whatever she couldn't see struck her from behind and sent her face first into the floor. She rose to her feet on uneasy legs. A trickle of blood leaked out of the crack on her nose. She touched it and winced. Then she felt a hard blow to her side and another to her back. Ashen stared through, slashed through the air her time and, and time again, meaning nothing. Alpine's whining was getting quieter. Ashen rose to her, her feet and swung once more, finally connecting to something. She couldn't tell what she hit, only that it screamed like her. Her sword vanished, stuck in whatever it was that she couldn't see. It said something in the old language, then cursed her, her, her in the common tongue. Uh, God damn it, the, unthing said, the unseen thing ing, ing said. Her sword appeared out of the air, clattering on the floor. Ashlyn, understandably confused, ran to comfort Red Alpine. The bleeding was mostly superficial, and Ashlyn said a quick prayer to avert. She turned to the nothing, grabbed her sword, and spoke. H hello Head emerged! Dark skin. And with matted hair, a thick beard sat on its chin, and there was a glistening red line running from the head's face over its left eye. The head stared back at, at her on an anger. On an angle, sorry. It furrowed its furrow as it says like she didn't understand. What? They had something else, this time you sounding a bit different from the first language it spoke. Ashen still didn't understand. I don't understand. The head sighed. It appears I must speak this guttural language of yours. The new men will be upon us soon. You need a suit. You could have killed Alpine! You triggered a breach! Ashlyn pushed her satchel behind her and backed up against the wall. I'm just an explorer. The head blinked twice inside. <sighs> of course you are. This way. Leave the dog. He'll only slow us down. Dog? Ashen heard of dogs like before, but at all she knew was that they had four legs and fur. Alpine was far too furry and had far too many legs. Either way, Ashwood scooped up Alpine and, and after the head. It led her down further into the bowels of the site too. Down twisted corridors with cracked floors, rusted walls, and splattered blood. The voices of the ghosts rang in her ears even louder than the noise screaming at her overhead. They stopped at a room. The symbols next to it pressed themselves, and the door opened. Inside was a yellow mass of machinery, unlike anything Ashton had ever seen before. It looked like a human, only larger and far bulkier than it ought to be. The tangled mess of wires and tubes at the, the droids frightened her. Just staring at the machine, it made her uncomfortable. Get in! But the ceiling above them shook, the new man, and had come home. Get in the damn suit! 
Ashton looked at Alpine. The beast stared back at her, but it was still weak. She placed him on the floor and stood her nerves once again. She said a prayer to avert and placed an approach machine. It stared back at her through a cold, unfilling helmet. It was alien to her. Another turn from above drove her to step inside. <clears throat> the inside of the machine was oddly warm. Ashen felt as if she had eaten a feast for her kings. All her fatigue disappeared almost infinite, instantly. She rose on an easy e feet and looked down at herself. Alpine was on his feet now and started barking. Good, the head said before vanishing. All we've got to do now is wait. Why are you helping me, she asked. I'm not. Before her, Ashen could... But ask another question, the new men were upon them. Ashton raised the sword to meet them, but they ignored her. The new men shuffled into the room and sniffed the air, but none of them attacked. Ashton let out a breath she didn't know she was holding and walked through the empty halls of the side two. She couldn't see the head anymore, but at least Alpine was following her. Lord Hubris would not be happy to hear about this. And that was the, um, sheesh, Bell of our story, the dead never die. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And it looks like I actually completely made a an incorrect estimate about how much time this will take to read it. I was focusing on something more like 45 minutes, but it looks like it only took like 20 minutes. Anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I have no idea what I'll be doing then, so until then, goodbye!